My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. This is episode number four about a mini series that explains how to create an inventory menu when you pause the game. So far, we've displayed a grid of items that the player has. We have this cursor that can move and we can even equip the selected item to one of the item slots. So we've did a lot of work. I'm quite proud of you guys. Um, and to finish on, on this subject, we will in this video add a little tweaks, a little improvements that will also be the opportunity to learn more about text surfaces. So how to display text on the screen. We'll display two additional um, texts when uh, yeah, in this inventory, we will display first the the amount of any item that has an amount. So, for instance, when when you pause the game and not, nothing is equipped, you you see the bow, but you don't know how many arrows you have. Um, but when it's equipped, here the the item icon does show the the amount. So maybe we also want to display the amount here in our uh, cell here but only for items that have an amount. Some of them have one like the bow, the bombs, and a lot of other probably don't like, uh, I don't know, the hookshot, the hammer. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. And as a second example, we will also display the name of the selected item, also with some text. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we go back one, once again to our big pause menu script. Uh, it's a big script that only returns uh, a table that has one unique function, the function that creates the pause menu. And everything is done here. Um, again, the main feature of the pause menu is to display the uh, grid surface. So every frame on draw is called and we display the grid that we built previously and we display the selection sprite. Uh, okay, so where do we build this grid? We build it in the function um, build items here. I mean, build, build grid background and build items. Um, yeah, and here we traverse all items that are likely that are, might be displayed. If the player has the item, we draw the item sprite on our grid. So this is a place to also display the, the amount if we do have an amount. So we can call if item has amount, this function will return true if uh, there is a counter, an amount associated with the item, even if it's zero, if it will return true. Um, so that's what we want. And yeah, if there is an amount, we will display, well, some, um, let's call this amount text, draw. Uh, we will draw this on the grid surface. We will create this amount text object uh, just in a few seconds. And where do we display it? Well, we'll see this later. Okay, let's, let's first create amount text here. Uh, we don't have to recreate it uh, at every step of the loop. Remember that we are doing a loop over all our items, but we can create it only once. So this will be a text surface. Um, we've talked about text surfaces a little bit in uh, chapter 32, which was about uh, displaying information on the screen. So we learned how to draw uh, pictures, text, or sprites, but uh, yeah, it was um, just a quick introduction, but today we will learn a, a little bit more about how to display um, text. Okay, um, what we can do actually is since we want to display more or less uh, the same thing as what we have in the HUD icon, Ah, oh, okay, it doesn't run because I'm in the middle of changing the code, but since we want to display more or less the same thing as in the code here, in, in the HUD, uh, we can just see the how the HUD script creates this text, this 30 here. 
and give it the same properties, in particular the font. Um, so yeah, script HUD item icon, it is created here. It was, it's also called amount text, by the way. And what's important probably here is the font, but we will also actually take the same alignment properties Okay, and where do we display our text? Um, well, first, I forgot before we before displaying it, we, we need to to set it to the correct text. So set text uh, item get amount. Yeah, sorry about that. And where do we display the text? We want to display it in the current cell, of course, and in the bottom in the yeah bottom left part of the current cell so this is actually dstx dsty these will give us the coordinates of the top left corner of our cell so we want just we just want to add uh, in both dimensions the size of the square which is called um, yeah square size square size. Okay, let's see the result. Yeah, it works. So we are displaying 13, uh, 30 here, uh, exactly aligned in the uh, bottom left corner of our cell. Um, maybe we want to actually display it a little bit more to the right and to the bottom. Uh, it can even exceed a little bit. Because here I think it's hiding too much pixels of the bow. Uh, you see, for, ex for example, in the HUD here, um, it, yeah, it exceeds a little bit the boundaries of the, of the icon itself. So let's do the same for the inventory, maybe. Uh, maybe just add like four pixels and it will look, I think, a little bit better. Yeah. Um, okay, but you can change it uh, to, to whatever you like, of course, you are free. Um, yeah, when we, when we say horizontal alignment and vertical alignment here, we are defining where the uh, text will be anchored, actually, um, with respect to the destination coordinates that are here. So if I remove the plus four for more clarity, I go back to it, align it to aligning my text exactly uh, in the bottom right part of the cell. And yeah, I, I did a mon text draw and I passed the, the coordinates of here. So the bottom right part of the square but the text is displayed, um, yeah, is anchored to the also to the bottom right part of my uh, of my text surface here because I specified horizontal alignment right and vertical alignment bottom. If you do instead, uh, I don't know, left and top, um, it will this time put the left and top part of your amount text at these coordinates here. And you can even do center. Of course, this is probably not what you want, but now the center of the text is aligned with uh, these coordinates, which are the bottom left part of the cell. Okay, I hope you followed. But you can do your own experiments, and maybe maybe it will be uh, more clear. Okay, so I guess that's it for the amount. And then the second thing that we might want to do is to display, as I was saying, um, the name of the item that is currently selected. Okay, so back to our draw function here. We draw the grid with all items which is fixed, and we draw then the, the selection sprite, selection cursor sprite. 
So as a third step, step we will draw a third object that will be, let's call it item name text, draw um, somewhere, <laughs> item name x, item name y. So I need to create this variable, this variable, and this variable. Um, the, the destination coordinate will be actually constant. So I can create them here. I, oops, item name x will be, well, here we have to decide. Uh, I hope I can run the game. No, I can't. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, I want to center the text horizontally on the screen. So I will create a text surface again. Its horizontal alignment would be centered and I will specify the destination and coordinates, well, the center of the screen. Because I want the center of the text uh, to, f to be anchored in the center of the screen, if that makes sense. But the Y coordinates, I want the <coughs> vertical coordinates to be, well, somewhere below the, the whole grid. So let's take grid Y, which is defined here. So this is the top of the grid plus the height of the grid. So now we are exactly in the bottom of the grid, plus some uh, some spacing. Um, and we can just keep the same spacing as the space that we have between two cells. So yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, back to the draw function. I still have to create the item text, item name uh, text surface. So where do we do that? We can do it here. We create the grid surface, we create the cursor sprite, and we can also create the item name text. So again, we create a text surface. So you can go to the documentation to see everything you can you can do here in your, with your text surface, but um, we said at least horizontal alignment should be center, vertical alignment. Um, well, this time it's, it will be top because, um, yeah, I, I, will, I will explain visually when, when it works, it will be easier to, uh, to understand. Um, and the font, we can use the same font as we have for dialogues and this is enter comment here. Um, yeah, and we need to specify some font size. Um, yeah, actually, if we want to do something better, we could, we could do, we could ask the language manager to tell us about the the correct day, the correct font. Uh, so, yeah, language manager. I think it's get dialog font, and this is this is only because uh, if you have later several languages in your game, maybe they won't all use the same font. So it's good to have something like this, and by default you do. Um, we can call get menu font. get menu font. So by default, at least for English, it's actually the, 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 the same font for all three cases here. Um, but yeah, get menu font. So we have a font and a font size and the color will be by default white. Um, something important is that, yeah, yeah you can check uh, these font files, but this one is a TTF font, so a vectorial font. You can set the size and everything. But the other one is just a PNG file. Um, and this one, this one, you of course cannot change the size. It's fixed. So that's why we didn't specify any font size um, with this one earlier when we created the, uh, where was it? 
here. Uh, the, the text for the amount. Okay, so we created the text surface. Um, now we have to update it. Whenever we move the cursor, so in update cursor, we should we should um, yeah first get the information about the current item. So we can actually um, steal these lines <laughs> that get the item name from the current cursor position. So let's get the item name, and if there is an item name in that cell and if the player has the item, so game has item uh, item name. So normally you would do game, get item, um, get variant greater than zero, but uh, there is a shortcut for that. There is a function has item, which is easier to both to read and to write. Um, so only if we have this item, we, we display its name. So, okay, item name text, set text. Um, let's start with something a little bit wrong. <laughs> let's directly write item name here. And it's wrong for two reasons. But first I want to test if it works. Oh, I forgot something. First, if there is nothing, we should clear the text. So we put uh, no text, we could put nil here. Because when you move the cursor from a position where there was an item to a position when, where there is no item, you want to remove the text. Oops, there is an extra character here. And also language manager is nil. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I need to require the language manager. Uh, require scripts language manager. If you don't want to to care with um, fonts that can have different that can be different uh, with different languages, you really don't have to do that. Uh, you, you do as you prefer. You can, of course, put font equals uh, the name of the font here, and it will be perfectly fine. But I wanted to do this because that's what your default dialog box script also does. If you are curious, we do in the dialog box script also language manager get dialog font. Okay, but that's that's a detail. Uh, cool. So let's see what happens. Does it work? Yay! And we show bow here. But actually we show the internal name. It's the file name of our item here. So it's quite wrong. We show bow here because the item is called bow.lua. And for instance, if you pick the, the life potion here, it will show life underscore potion. So we, of course, don't want to display internal names here. We want to display something cool. And it will be even better if uh, it was translated to the current language. So we could make an array, an array that tells the uh, item names in English. But since uh, we want to support in the future maybe multiple languages, it will be cleaner to do like we do for dialogues, which is putti putting all the information in, um, well, not in dialogues, dot that, because dialogues are uh, the, yeah, the complete dialogue box with the, all its features. But for just simple text like this, there is strings, dot that, uh, that maybe we didn't, didn't mention much, except in chapter 33. Um, yeah, I thought it was chapter 30, 32. It doesn't matter really. But yeah, all uh, simple strings that are not uh, uh, dialogues per se, you can put them in, in this strings.dat function. So, okay, we want 
one such string for each item that will appear in the inventory. So we can do inventory dot item dot bow for instance. Uh, you can put anything you want here, but um, I like organi organizing them into some kind of hierarchy and the dot is interpreted by the quest editor here as as a yeah as, as a hierarchy uh, separator so they it will shown be shown as folders like you have here everything in the hud is a, is in in a hud folder and yeah bow should be displayed as well just bow but with a capital letter in english or maybe bow and arrows why not bow and arrows is nicer and it automatically uh, it is automatically showing my um, yeah my entry here as a, as two folders because the key is inventory dot item dot bow okay and let's create a second one inventory dot item dot uh, sorry not arrow but life potion so here I'm using the internal name. And here I'm putting the cool uh, user friendly name like life potion with a space and a capital letter. Okay, and if you really have 20 items, uh, yeah, you need to do all of them here. And the last thing that we have to do is, oh, sorry, I'm not in the correct file. Let's close all of these. Last thing, last thing that we have to do is to uh, get this text instead of showing, where is it? In update cursor uh, here, yeah. Instead of showing item name, we want to get the current language. So get string um, item name, not exactly item name. We call the string inventory dot item dot followed by the item name the internal item name so this is the concatenation operator in Lua if you forgot so we build the uh, the name the key inside strings dot that so we build this string here and it will return that value here so the human readable name Okay, I think this should work. Let's see. Yay, bow and arrow is nice. Um, so I think we will stop here for today. In your real project, uh, you are of course uh, allowed to do something that looks a bit nicer. Here we directly have the letters in white here and no background, so it's not always very readable if the if the map is uh, some, somewhere, um, yeah, with with light colors, it will not be very readable. But you can put some some background. Now you you should know how to do that. But if not, of course, you can always uh, join our Discord and ask for help. Uh, one last minor detail is that when you have have a text surface that needs to call sol.language.getString actually there is a little shortcut here you don't have to call it explicitly you can do set text key instead of set text and it will automatically get the uh, string that has this key in the strings.dat file of the current language so it's completely equivalent to set text followed by sol.language.getString okay it's just shorter Let's see if what I'm saying is true. Yeah, it works, cool. You can also check that when you select an item that you don't have, nothing is displayed. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's it for now. We, we could uh, improve the inventory menu forever. Uh, it's not looking particularly uh, great visually, but I'm sure you can do something nicer or you can get some uh, free art from one of our projects to for, for your inventory menu so really a lot of things are, are possible but now you should know how to do these improvements 
Um, but again, we can always help the communities here. Um, yeah, so that's it for the inventory. Next time we will do a tutorial about something completely different. Well, it will probably still be linked to items, but uh, you will see. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.